Love 15. showing a little bit of the blueprint the other night about how to play Kerber. There was some very good discipline going cross court until she saw the shot to go for down the line. Oh. I think Team Australia would have had a lot of eyes on that match pitch and I know he's got Captain Leighton Hewitt there, also private coach Robert Lindstedt, and also in the Team Australia box is Nicole Pratt, who always has a laptop with her collecting data. They would have been watching how Zachary broke down the game of Angie Kerber the other night. Oh. court with anyone all day for as long as she needs to so I think we'll see hopefully a lot of that discipline just like in that point of what you said going cross court until it's there ready to be hit about hitting Kerber into some form. We know that she likes the ball at hip height. So it would be great to see Isla early, put some shape on the ball, get it out of the strike zone because you do not want to play Kerber into some form off the back of the court. So good from Kerber. Well, that's trademark Kerber, isn't it? This forehand down the line. You see a great replay here. The court coverage from both players, but this is Angie Kerber. When she gets given this ball, this is going to be punished down the line all day, and she aims for that line and nails it then. from Isla. Love to see it. Took a little bit of pace off. Just rolled that forehand. Got a little bit more width. Sometimes you don't want to give Kerber too much angle, but this was played perfectly. She really got her at stretch and then opened up the court and went back in behind her. class attached to that volley. Huge yes. composure, just waited for opponent to commit one way or the other.
beautifully played. So disciplined from Tom Lanovich. Waited for the right one. And Pichinu, as commentators, we obviously speak about tactics and strategies and, and ways of breaking your opponent's games down. But at the end of the day, for me, this match is so much about belief for Isla Tom Lanovic. It's about coming out and believing that she can win this match, even in tough moments, because there's no doubt she's had trouble at different times throughout her career. She's got herself into some really yes. good winning positions at times, and I just feel like that belief factor has really got to play a part here tonight. That is a quick surf by her standards. 12 k's higher than her average of 166 for this tournament. And more importantly was the location. Favourite shot for Kerber, yes. four on line. Yeah, she's going to hit this one all day, and there's no doubt Tom Lanovich is aware of that, but she hits it so flat. That one going down at 134 k's as well. Difficult opening eight minutes for Team Australia. Tomanovic's serve under siege early on. And that is the perfect response for Team Germany, not so for Team Australia. In their opening game since coming over from Perth. Let's go, come. Another lefty uh, joining us, not just the one in between the rectangle, the one just outside the rectangle, Laura Robson, hello. Hello, yeah, atmosphere down here is buzzing and there was still, as I made my way down to the seat, still a few people outside waiting to get in. Uh, unfortunately, they've got to wait till the three love changeover now, but there was a last minute dash to get some drinks involved, get some, get some beers because it's a gorgeous, <laughs> summer's day and a gorgeous night of tennis aren't you a part of wimbledon these days can you can you not change that rule for us i would love to but if only have oh, you not got <laughs> enough power unfortunately not oh okay like that Hello. shot. So Torben, speaking to him before, obviously raised the importance for Angelique Kerber about a good start. And it certainly was a great first game. Angie, every time she wins the coin toss, will always choose to receive first. That was a good first receiving game. She 
Could be a little disappointed that she was late to that, as we've been saying. In the and the forehand down the line, still Kerber's favourite way to go with that forehand. And you kind of give her the one cross court and uh, let her hit it a few times and make her know that you're waiting for the one down the line. Great play there from Tom Lanovic. 15, 14. Just stuck with the backhand cross court. Having some long extended rallies. And this one here going through the middle part of the court and forcing an error from Kerber. Response from Tom Lanovic having dropped her opening service game. You know, guys, I saw uh, Robert Lindstedt last night because he was watching Kerber's last on. match and uh, he had quite a few things to say of what he noticed. And the main was to, one was to go okay. big or bigger than Tom Lanovic would usually go off the return because he is, you know, similar to us, thinks that she's just half a split step slower at the moment than she used to be, and then struggles to load off the outside leg to get herself back in the point once she's made the return. Oh, that's beautiful from Tom Lanovic, that backhand cross court. Talk about Kerber's forehand down the line being trademarked. Milanovic loves this backhand cross court and strikes it beautifully. New partnership, as Laura Oxen mentioned, with Robert Lindstedt and Tom Milanovic. First tournament she won. They teamed up when she went and won, so a fairly successful start to their partnership. I had a quick chat with him the other day as well and was keen to see what they had potentially worked on in the off season and, and one thing he did mention was just her awareness of when she could move forward more when she could step in and I think against someone that, like Kerber that does retrieve pretty well I think tonight any opportunity that Tom Lanovich gets it would be great to see her take some balls out of the air. She's just got a bit more firepower off the baseline, isn't she? The, the ball strike sounds different from the side here. There's a bit more weight to it. And uh, I just feel like she's going to get more free points off the serve than Kerber. And it just gives her a bit more of a free swing in the return games. But, yeah, we know Isla's so consistent off the baseline. So if she can just inject a little bit more... Too much injection there. <laughs> she almost had too much time, didn't she? Too much time to think. Fantastic awareness 14, that Kerber was off the court. Took this one nice and early. Didn't overplay it. Just absorbed 
the return pace and struck beautifully. Perfect sequence of two games for Team Australia. Get in front for the first time tonight. Team Australia leads two games to one. Well, the Aussies getting into Perth. Uh, so go. Wouldn't have had uh, too much time to uh, have got themselves around this absolutely gorgeous city. But uh, Casey Delacqua, this is. Uh, a beautiful part in the epicenter, really, of Sydney, the harbour, an aquatic playground for Sydney Siders. It's an incredible 150 miles of shoreline. Yeah, it's a pretty iconic part of the world, isn't it? Anyone that comes to Sydney certainly travels down there, gets the stock standard postcard photo. Have you done the walk over the top? Many times. I actually took the United Cup trophy up to the top of the Harbour Bridge, so... Look at you. Dropping, <laughs> dropping truth bombs. That's it. That's how I roll. I'm with a VIP. <laughs> That's the sort of racket I should have played with in my career. Might have been able to find the middle of the racket once in a while. As for Tomanovic finding uh, the middle of the racket finally after that opening game, we're understandably just looking a little edgy, but when she is good, she can be absolutely excellent. Six top tens quickly, wins for Tomjanovic in her career. Last one coming in Cincinnati when she was playing so well against Bedosa. First one coming all the way back in 2014. Took care of Advanska at Roland Garros on the clay courts. Lower levels, please. First seat available for now. Thank you. And this is one of the downsides of keeping the fans out for three games. And we have talked about it for many years since the, uh, the rule change came in. But... Unlucky, they are still trying to get to their seats because there were so many of them parked outside the gates. Mm, the floodgates have opened and they're trying to find their way. Disciplined on when it's skipping through low like that and just need to make it to a good length against Kerber cross court. She's not going to hit too many winners off that back end. Don't want to be giving away too many free points. I think Laura's had enough of talking to us. I think you found somebody Thank far you. more interesting, That's haven't you? Maybe Laura's, I don't think you're ignoring me, are you? But you just found somebody more interesting that's probably having a good conversation <laughs> with, but wasn't worth answering my question. down here so I, I apparently you were talking to me I don't know <laughs> but yeah I've got someone interesting to chat to uh, at the end of the game here Go for it. Maddie Abdon this is a big day for Team Australia you've come Team from Australia Perth, but this atmosphere is something else isn't it it is, it's a special competition, you know, to compete in multiple cities in the same event. 
We're trying to come, you know, bring our form from Perth, bring our energy, and the crowd is super loud in here today. The moment we walked in, we felt the, the noise, really, and it's uh, exciting to be here playing in front of this Sydney crowd. And what do you make of this matchup so far? Great start for Isla. She's being really consistent off the baseline. Was that part of the, the team tactics? Yeah, I think, you know, Kerb is such a solid, grinding sort of player. We knew Isla had to play well, but, you know, we really think Isla can, can win this match. She started to play well the last two matches in Perth. And, uh, yeah, I think we're, you know, she's, she's confident. We're confident that she can get the job done. Obviously, Angie hasn't been her complete best yet. So we're hoping uh, she can just keep it up. But it's going to be a tough battle no matter what. And what's the vibe for you and Storm? Obviously, you would love to get out there and play, but you don't want the problem of it being a deciding mix. Yeah, exactly. It's a strange one. Um, yeah, people say after, oh, you know, you don't get to play, or then you do, and or you win the mix to win. I was like, well, I'd much rather be 2-0 and not have to play, but if it comes down to it, we'll be ready. Good luck for the rest of the time. Yeah, thanks. Great to hear from Matt there and having Good him and Storm being impressive in the mixed doubles and yeah, if, I had to, if it does come down to it, I certainly will back to them and Storm, world number one, pretty impressive. Just starting to find that reliability. Yes, yeah, she got a little fortunate off the tape here, but you can see that Tomanovic is just building these points, constructing them in a way that's not high risk, but definitely give her a favourable outcome more often than not. She seems really clear to me what she needs to do out here. And as you mentioned before, Pitch, that backhand of Kerber's not really going to do too much damage. It's almost 10K less in terms of kilometres per hour in pace. And Laura's mentioned the pace courtside as well. Backhands that she's hit tonight from Kerber. Timely boost. of shots. Four straight games for Team Australia. Team Australia leads four games to one. They had a pretty decent two-hander as well that was just clapping at Aiden Hewitt. He will be very impressed. With that. I'll tell you the one thing that impressed me about Isla, how low she gets to the ball. She sinks into her shots beautifully. She absolutely does and Let's watch this one here. Oh, this is the one where she was disciplined, went cross-court. But this one, she steps into it across her body and, as you said, keeps her head nice and still. And, as you said, just leans into it, gets down nice and low. It's a beautiful shot. One of the, those players out there that likes to play a lot more front foot tennis on her backhand as well, parallel with the feet rather than open stance. So many players in that position are still open stance and they have to guide it a little bit. She can absolutely lace it. Yeah, 
and it's green for go for Team Australia right now as they hunt for gold at the United Cup. A place in the final beckons. And uh, some celebrities, not just on the uh, Aussie Open bench, but up there, Robert Wilson in the house. Yeah, really good friends with uh, Matt Reed, who's on the support team this week. Um, he's been travelling a lot with any Aussie who needs a bit of help. He was with Jason Kubler at the... Are you saying Matt's a renter coach? Well, <laughs> I, think he, saying, I think he would agree with that at the moment. Uh, you know, he was coaching Hewitt's son for a, a good while, but now he's kind of mixing around, but he likes it that way. All right, Matty, we've just absolutely torn up your CV there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I promise you, we'll you know Matt together. listens to every piece of commentary uh, that's no. coming right back at you. <laughs> I'd say it to his face. <laughs> we make, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, beside Rebel, yeah. he's uh, Peyton's wife, but in my heyday, he loved watching her on yeah. Home and Away, the Hewitt. Great to see her out, also supporting Team Australia. Three majors for Angie, three quarter finals at the uh, Grand Slam level for Tom Lanovic. And the first one, I'm assuming you may remember. There was a lot of chatter going on, but every time Isla dropped into any sort of change up in pace or, or mix up in slice, they're all loving it. They're going, yeah, I love the change up. And that's clearly what they've been working on over the last few matches, because I think when you watch back her match against Casey Bolter and, and even the one against Pagula, it was so one pace the entire time, which someone like Kerber can just soak up. But looking to try and find a few ways to punch through those defences and stop being on the defence herself. That was better. Yeah, Ash Barty, Barty, a good friend, was uh, at Wimbledon in 2021 for Tomanovic. Went down 6-1-6-3. Good to see Ash around and about at the Brisbane International. Absolutely. Great to see her around the tennis courts again and little Bob Hayden. watching this and cheering on Team Australia as well. 30, 40. Well, it has been the soundtrack to the evening so far at the Ken Rosewell Arena is cheers for Team Australia. A potential fifth game in a row in her reach. have probably got to know Isla Tomlanovic a little bit more because of her appearance on the Netflix doco, Breakpoint, even myself. It's great to see her there and learning more about her and learning about these players off the court. She featured pretty heavily. And so glad that she's fit, she's healthy. And she's back playing down under. And so far here in this match, playing some really smart, disciplined tennis. Oh. 
Kerber's got to do some more of that, whether it's you know, the backhand cross-court angle that she can get really flat or maybe the drop shot. She's got to draw Tomjanovic off the baseline because Isla's just sitting there soaking it up and she's actually being the first one to open up the lines when Kerber, that's her bread and butter, to open up the forehand line. She's not getting a chance. Glued it to the line. And not for the first time tonight, Tom Nanovic introduces the ball to the line and finds herself with a break point. We've seen that many times before, Here's haven't we? Serve out wide. Opening up the court. What do you think she should be doing on the outside? I mean, you guys are behind the court. You can see it a little clearer, but I feel like trying to get it deep in the box and serve body is a good play against Tomjanovic. Everything she touches turns to gold. And that's a shade of colour the Aussies like. <laughs> oh, this is an incredible point. Once again, just so disciplined, but that one, she uses so much of her left hand to create this angle. And that one was an open stance backhand. So balanced. Huh. Cheers, Cascade, down from the higher echelons of this wonderful stadium. Five games, two one. And that will be music to the ears of Tomanovic as Zverev takes his leave of the court as he gets himself prepared. And at the moment, it is looking as though he is going to have to come out and salvage the situation for Team Germany once again. blinder there but I like the combination of the shorter forehand cross court here and then this one flat and clean down the line couldn't have played it better yeah, like you said Laura I think on the flip side well, he needs to start to find ways to Milanovic from just moving laterally across the back of the court because she's so good at doing that. So like you said, that short forehand cross court, opening up the court then flattening it out. Oh, just hitting clean like that. Yeah, that works too. <laughs> Trying to hit the ball a little bit harder. She's uh, six Ks up tonight, Kerber, off her forehand side than she has been. Obviously, the way that Zachary hits the ball, she takes pace out of your racket because it's so heavy and quick. <laughs> that has been a nice adjustment Easy. from Kerber. Hasn't been enough yet to stay competitive. Such a 
good dig there from Isla. Another great return from Kerba, but Isla was quick and ready for this one and I like the squash luck forehand down the line. more KPHs on that first serve brings up set point for Team Australia. has been a thread that has run through the German's career. She will not go away lightly tonight. Another thunderbolt of a return. may have thought that the net was protecting her from the down the line shot and that the German was going to have to go cross court here. Kerber had other ideas. Turned up. <laughs> this is just beautiful from Ala. I can't wait to yes. actually see the replay. Here we go because what a dig. And just keeps the racket face so still. Just gets underneath it, but. Stick that in the museum. That was an absolute work of art. Yeah, Kerber. Applause from her. Comfortable around the net, Tom Lambitch. I've played doubles with her many times, and I used to always say to her, "You, you have great volleys. You can be up at the net, and you should be up there more." And it's a, that was a ripping one, but. <laughs> Such a great game to watch. Advantage, Team Germany. 
both players bringing the best out of each other. The return did the damage, a nice bit of tidying up on the forehand. Yet another break point, number six. Serve that was deserving. Some world class shots from Kerber and great determination to stay involved in this opening set. Team Australia, though, lead 5 2. No time to relax for the players. It's a busy weekend and then they'll be looking towards Melbourne, but we're going to hang around here for the weekend in Sydney. And if I get a chance, I'm going to take myself down to uh, Bondi. Don't worry, I'm not going to get out on the beach. I'm going to go and sit in one of the cafes and overlook everybody else that are doing something that I am absolutely hopeless at, surfing. It is a beautiful spot, just a kilometre worth of sand, but unquestionably the one that everybody knows if they come to this part of the world. That's where Iga Swiatek is heading. She said uh, after she... this weekend, she's going to spend sure, try and spend a couple extra days in Sydney and get, head straight down to Bondi. There you go. I'm sure there'll be a camera following her around and her every move. She was surfing over in the Western Australia, wasn't she? Yeah, she said it was more body surfing. <laughs> Well, number one, Leighton Hewitt, and uh, that is who Tom Lanovic is playing against, a former world number one as well, back in 2016. Kerber rose to the top. She still remains the oldest woman to have debuted as uh, world number one. She managed that at 28 years old, 238 days after Serena's loss to Pushkova in the semi-finals of the US Open. Serena had held that spot since the 18th of February 2013, finally fell off her perch and Kerber took it and then took the US Open title. Second of that season as well against Pushkova from 3-1 down in the final set against Pushkova. Don't write Kerber out ever. I made that, but for me, the more worrying thing for Kerber on her own serve is that she's making a lot of serves. She's up over 90% first serves in, but then only winning 38% of those first serve points. So something's going wrong, whether it's the placement of the first serve, maybe the move afterwards. How many great servers have there been that have played this game with the other hand? I mean, Kerber is a natural righty but obviously plays tennis left-handed. Rafa? He's, he's a good... I mean, he's, I mean, you would argue that after his serve is what does the damage for a lot of players. Oh, sorry, I'd yes. take his serve, though. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm talking about it in isolation in terms of, like, just raw power, you know, just cheap points that come your way as a... As somebody that's played this game, I mean, Sharapova was another one that comes to mind. Robin Hasser was another one. I think Lauren Davis is also. Yeah. I'm missing someone, I know. I'm trying to think who it is. Somebody else out there at the moment that, that plays with the other hand. But it is Are you thinking of Fernandez? Yeah. Yeah, there's another guy that plays the other way around as well, or writes the other way. Anyway, it's just got to be incredibly tough, the most important shot that we have. Service game from Angelique Kerber, wasn't it? 
I can see you applauding that. Okay. <laughs> Point that was down outrageous. There. It was the outrageous. The coverage here. Tamjanovic could have done a little more, but she was on the back foot when she played that almost like a half volley. And then Kerber with the hook around the side. I think I was only one of ten applauding that shot. <laughs> just needs to look up at a split second because I feel like there's been a couple of times even in that previous point you know it was an outrageous point by Kerber but she's had opportunities where she's had either the open court or the opportunity to go back in behind but Kerber's starting to read Isla's ball to not ride her out. So point has come and gone for Tomjanovic. Three break back points coming for Kerber to keep this opening set alive. Team Germany to within one game in this opening set. Stunning turnaround. Team Australia leads five games to four. anyway with the noise within this stadium right now and uh, the players uh, have just uh, dulled the mic somewhat so it would have been nice to have heard what Robert Lindstad was trying to say there to Tom Ranovic as she tries to pull herself out of this riptide. Yeah the one thing I did hear was if it gets worse we'll figure it out whether that's a tactical thing you know who knows without the context of the whole conversation uh, but you know pretty calm on the change of ends there no worries she's been able to break her with serve couple of times already and she's not going to get hit off the court here off Kerber's serve yes maybe when she's in the rally when Kerber's starting to open up on the forehand line but other than that no drama just honing in on her discipline a little bit. I just feel like the consecutive string of points in these last couple of games has not been great for Isla. You can't let Kerber get a run of points. Circling back to the, uh, the people that play with their non sort of dominant hands. Uh, the one person that I did forget that a couple of people reminded me, of course, is from uh, where Tomanovic was originally born in Croatia. 
I was choking on it. I wasn't 100% sure of my own right. Borna Choric is another one that plays yeah, with the go. opposite hand. Why would you ever have the option to be left-handed and choose to be righty? <laughs> 15, 13. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand it either, Laura. Tom Lanovic trying to right her world. From 5 on up, she's been pegged back to 5-4. Can she find that brand of tennis that she did to get that type of lead right here, right now? Taken another step in this entire game, got what it deserved. Dirty, forty. that Kerber put into that opening set. Six games it is Tom Anovic who gets it in the end. Six games to four. she needs to keep her foot on the pedal. This is where she needs to really hone in on these next couple of games and just make sure she stays disciplined, doesn't give away any free unforced errors. And most importantly, believe in herself. Losses at this stage of the comeback are definitely not fatal and they will lead to the truth for Kerber in terms of how she is going to need to play for the rest of her career. And there's certainly been a suggestion since 5-1 that that's the right way to play. We've seen her just throw her arm a little quicker at the ball, taking away Tomjanovic's time. Doing so, she's perhaps going to have to accept the fact that there is going to be a, a higher number of unforced errors than she's used to committing. Well, you look at what Svitolina has been able to do with her game in the last six, seven months, you know, especially over the grass season, a surface which she traditionally wasn't great on. You just have to force yourself to be brave but uh, I, I think you know you, you get more free points with that and so the unforced errors kind of balance out it just might take you a while Be an ideal start here for team germany oh, 
beautifully played by Isla. A nice one-two punch, great first Good. serve, and then finish it off. I feel like there's some risks that Kerber can take off the back of the court and being a bit more aggressive and accept those unforced errors, but the serve is definitely a concern. It's a... It's a game of physics and at times of chance, but that was unbelievably good use of a tennis court by Kerber. start it is for Team Germany. Doesn't let the disappointment hang around for too long, having dropped the opening set, having made those inroads. And Tomjanovic and Team Australia with work to be done. times that Torben's work with Angelique Kerber was with her from uh, 2003 and 4 then he had another couple of actually three years 2011 to 2013 he then through her, her peak of 2015 to 2017 was with her was with her from <laughs> 2020 to 2021 and he's back with her now on the bag not often you see somebody keep recircling back to the same player like that. Not that many times, no. This is the string of points that Kerber seems to... Whether it's two, three, four, his run of points... Looked around here. It is Tomjanovic who's going to have to work hard to pump the brakes. Kerber accelerating away at the start of the second. Two games to look. Three years with Donna Bekic, also did a, a fabulous job with her, did uh, Torben. It's with Conteve for about a year. couple of months with Emma Raducanu. Yeah, I was going to say a little less time with Emma. <laughs> What's happened here, Casey? Well, I think it's, it, it's always on Isla's racket, it just feels for me. I mean, I feel like there's no doubt Kerber's up the ante a little bit, maybe taking a few more risks, certainly hitting with a little bit more pace. A combination of both ends. Wow. And that's a better point there when she's a little bit stretched out the back end. Just if she's going to go hard and fast through the middle, it needs to probably go to the back end side where she can't hurt you as much. A few have gone through to that forehand side and she just 
as Kerber does, redirects that flat forehand off or down the line. From down here, it just seems like Isla Server's lost a little bit of speed and it's just setting up that much more for Kerber to come down over the shot. And Kerber loves playing slightly above the shoulder to then bring it so flat and low. I'm not so sure it's that actually Isla's lost serve. I think it's just the fact that Kerber's been just a little bit more willing to, to return a bit quicker, so it looks as though the sting's come out of it. It's been more an elevation of the Germans' play than perhaps a loss from the Australian. are so high tonight. Pressure may well be a privilege, but it is also at a premium. talking about there where she just goes for a little bit more angle on it either flat or if she's trying to slice it tee but to actually hit her spots in the corners rather than just rolling one through to Kerber's body going to be able to hit faster on the return if she's got the time to do so and it's coming onto her racket. Certainly, I mean, you're right there courtside, Laura, but did not accelerate through that second serve at all. Did not get any leg drive, just looked tentative. Almost already in recovery mode as she's still in the motion. You can see her moving back behind the baseline as she's still following through. As you've just mentioned, that's also going to be punished from Kerber. Just sitting in the middle of the box. Yes. 
can hear a lot of back yourself and, and those type of comments coming from the team zone of Team Australia because, as I mentioned earlier, so much about the way that Isla goes is about self-belief, believing what a quality ball striker she is, backing herself at the back of the court, her serve. Didn't want Team Germany to luxury in the lead. Needed to get a little traction in the second set. Tomjanovic has done exactly that. Trails Team by the break. Germany leads two games to one. Catch our breath after three epic games. We'll get a little opportunity to take around some more of the hotspots. Over to Manly. It's just about a 20 minute ferry from the Manly ferries and some of the most picturesque scenery you can get. Millions of visitors a year getting out to that particular part of the world. Manly Corso, Manly Wharf, very popular among the locals. And uh, well, get yourself out there for a bit of lunchtime lunch. Uh, lie on the beach afterwards. Looks a pretty nice way to spend a day. Apart from the fact that Wally Masur lives out, and you might bump into <laughs> Just him. Just avoid him. Yeah, that's it. There's always an asterisk. There's no such thing as utopia, but Manly gets very close. So Parkins, there's the Ken Rosewell Arena that we are enjoying this wonderful contest tonight between Australia and Germany, and it's been a, a fabulous tournament, well run. There's been some nice coaching clinics on the outside. Tennis Australia Time. doing a very good job Ladies in terms of that side, side of things. Also loads weeks. of kids Thank over you. every single day out there on the courts, getting them enthused about this wonderful sport. Can be challenging as it's ups and downs. Not always kind to the mind, is it, Casey? No, it certainly <laughs> isn't. <laughs> But it has been great to see so many activations out in the back courts. It's what it's about. Look at all the people here in Ken Rosewell Arena as well. And there's a lot of life left in this first of the evening's matches. the best we've seen Angie play all week. So just to see her improvement with every match, and, and certainly yesterday she didn't play her best, but I felt like Sakari was just not allowing her to play well. But this is such a good matchup for her to get the rhythm back, get that match intensity back. shot, forehand down the line, and just clips the tape with that one. We feel another couple of weeks of matches, there's no way she's missing that. just how she's made some adjustments, Kerber, because there's no doubt that she's been willing to be courageous in terms of maybe court positioning. She's up way more on the baseline, taking the ball much earlier.
It was a good dig. One, Unfortunately, two, we got to see the set seven. point that again. Was, that was still a quality point. We needed a replay of that. We just wanted some atmosphere. We can't let you go away from Sydney being perfect, Casey. We've got to just throw something in there. <laughs> Very adaptable, it's all good. <laughs> oh, crunch. Love it. Well inside the baseline was Tom good. Manovic. And there you can see nine more pressure points won. There's 30, 40 points, bigger points. Juice points, 30 all points, those type of points where Tomjanovic has collected many more. And she would dearly love to grab this one too. All the feels from the crowd. Some ferocious hitting in that game from Tomjanovic and Kerber struggling to contain her. off the return here didn't quite do enough with this one As they earned unforced error from the way that Kerber's been playing since 5 1 down. The fact that Tomjanovic felt as though she needed to go that big into the forehand side. Could have been so different, just a little flick off the tape, saving Kerber, giving her another opportunity. She capitalizes. Breakpoint chances coming thick and fast in this second set. Oh! Game in Germany. And Kerber once again forges ahead, courtesy of a double fault from Tom Janovic. Team Germany 3 2. Thank you. 
willst du die Sekunden, dass du wirklich nachgehst? Das war jetzt richtig gut. Too much talk, not enough talk, almost telepathic between the two of them. Comes from a generation, of course, Kerber, where coaching wasn't allowed on court, and just maybe looking at the way that Torben and uh, her sitting side by side with very little conversation is somebody that wants to work it out on her own. Yeah, problem solver. I would say that Angie Kerber is a problem solver. Corbin knows her better than most, and you've done enough coaching as well, Pitch, to know when to speak, when the right time to maybe just pull back. It's the art of coaching, and Torben is one of the better ones. to at times plant that seed and let it germinate. That could be mid-match, that could be obviously through the practice courts as well and wait for it to uh, come to the form of your player's mind. Extended, come on. You know she's feeling it, and you know you're probably in a bit of trouble. Yep, she just pulled the pin out on the grenade as the German. That one has detonated off the strings, and look at that passion. from Tom Lanovich. 30, 50. Too much in the first set, the flat one out wide on the juice side where she really pronates round on the wrist, and it just seems like I was kind of expecting the body and the slice T, but not moving out wide to that ball. love for a sport and particularly for competition is something that every single great champion has had and you can see it coming through from Kerber right now dripping out of every pore desperate to rescue the situation for Team Germany Wow. 
Pretty much everyone in the stadium disliked that except <laughs> Team Germany's bench <laughs> and Kerber, and understandably so. Kerber's made some changes, having been 5-1 down. She's certainly changed up. Oh, a bit of frustration there. There's no doubt that there's more traffic going into the forehand of Isla Tomlanovic. Kerber has done it off the return, off the back of the court, just directing traffic there into that forehand side and it's starting to break down and that was a clear example right oh. there. cannot stem the tide and it is a, a fairly heavy tide against her at the moment 5-2 to team Germany's second set actually from 5-1 up in that uh, opening set been struggling to pick up games what's that now it's 8-2 in favor of team Germany in terms of games won and lost Sasha backstage in the gym he spends an awful lot of his day in the gym we're lucky enough to be staying in the hotel where the players are and uh, he is up on the top floor with his trainer most of the time when I've been up there, which makes it sound like I've been up there a <laughs> You've lot. You've been up there, Pat. Are you just trying to tell everyone that you go to the gym all the time? Is that's, that what you're trying to that's tell? That's I, I am, yeah. <laughs> I, I may be fibbing. <laughs> what is it, 10 minutes a pop? Well, what I do is I tend to go in like at a sort of 20 minute interval and see which players are in there so that when I come on the microphone, I can you say that I saw them in there and it sounds like I've, I've bumped into an awful lot of them. It's a smart move. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. All right, really quickly, uh, hopefully we got this teed up. We're gonna show you a little strategic change that Casey's been alluding to. Well, we can see there after the set one when it was 5-1 and Kerber was down and, and really looked out, the one thing she changed was her return placement and that was pushing everything she could into Time. mostly into the forehand of Tom Lanovic. So I'm hoping that Team Australia have seen this data and have seen the fact that after the first and second serve, Isla has to be ready for a forehand and be really clear on what she wants to do with that forehand because I do just feel that that has made a very big difference in the service games of Isla Tomlanovic. Clarity, a little confusion for Team Australia currently. Oh, absolute firecracker. A little nuclear fusion about Kerber's game at the moment, and it's accurate and it's an atomic clock, and there is not a lot that Tom Lanovich can do about it. This is hugely impressive. Triple set point. A set of tennis that allows us to reminisce 
about just how great Angie Kerbel was and potentially can still be 6-2 Team Germany. I think back to a graphic that popped up in the fourth game of the first set and Tomjanovic had already hit eight winners by that point of the match and they're just dwindling slightly and it just seems like she's trying to overplay here now that Kerb is bringing the forehand into the mix just not really anticipating or, or willing to grind out the rally yeah great Laura I'd love to see especially early in this third set just her dig out and, and just grind and just extend the rally as long as possible. We really discipline once again, even mixing some shape, which I don't know if we've seen much of as well. Kerber because she hasn't got a win yet. She's striving for her first win and she has been so good out here in terms of making adjustments, making changes and being willing to do so as well. Anything really in Kerber's game at the moment. She is rock solid, but I just feel she's playing too, or she's being allowed to play too many forehands in that middle third of the court where Tomjanovic needs to bring the width back in, get it wide on Angie's backhand side. And sure, if she passes you cross court with that low angle she likes to go for, too good, but more often than not, it'll get you in. Again, Team Germany. First game, Fawcett. And on she rolls. As uh, we go once again, that's... Uh... Not sure quite how good Sasha is on the ground. In fact, he's another one that actually plays tennis right-handed and golf left-handed. That just reminded me when I saw him uh, putting out there. That goes back to that. But uh, I'll tell you one of the big shifts here, Casey, just uh, looking at some of the numbers from what happened over the course of the opening set. And particularly, let's, uh, uh, Tomjanovic has gone down as this match has gone on. She's lost 4Ks off her forehand. She's lost 12Ks off that reliable backhand uh, from set one to set two, which is a huge shift. Part of that has to be attributed to the way that Kerber's played. She's upped her speeds on her forehand by about 3Ks and a massive 7Ks off her backhand side. So she's taken the sting a little bit out of the Australian's game. Oh. Question is, is, can the Australian establish herself again? taking the sting out of Tom Lanovich's game. There's no doubt about it. But I think oh. we all agree that it's also Isla's probably maybe a bit her mentality as well and, and being able to step up and still get up and, and crunch some balls as well because it's a quite an, uh, uh, you know, in terms of pace, it's a big drop. Huh. 30, 50. And just a few too many returns not in play you know Kerber's not got a, a huge first serve yes she's doing incredible numbers getting it in but she's not killing you with that Oh, 
15. They were a little speculative in the start of the match, weren't they? Those shots from Kerber. Now they are sublime. Okay, so you would probably agree that was my least favourite when I played her. I always thought she had no right to hit a shot like that. <laughs> Kerber out here in this match, haven't we? And it, it's, it's been coming in patches throughout her previous matches, but tonight it just feels like she's stringing it together. We've seen it so many times tonight. She's just been owning the pain. The extremities of the court being hit time and time again by Kerber. the other night. It was a third loss here at the United Cup. So desperate for that win. You've had so much time out of the game. And to see her out here tonight, I think it's such a good life lesson, particularly if you're a young player out there in terms of attitude and how you come out and perform and just keep trying. And, and sometimes it can just come together. She obviously hasn't got over the line tonight, but it's super impressive. This doesn't always create character, but it does reveal it. This is a must-win game for Tom Lanovich, her 15th forehand winner for the match, and you can see there 19 off the racket of Kerber, which I'm sure a lot of them have come since 5-1 down in that first set.
She's a brick wall. Yes, a brick wall right yes, now. Yes. She certainly is. And that, back in that forehand of Tom Lanovich has just been broken down, hasn't it? Kerber has just directed almost anything possible into that forehand of Tom Lanovich, and she's just now pressing, panicking, and creating a lot of unforced errors off that side. because I can see how yes. hard Tomjanovic is working. She is really trying to rip the forehand, mm. but almost falling backwards a little while she's still in the motion. And that's just because Kerber's moved her around so much over the last hour that she's already in anticipation mode when she's still in the shot. one forehand and she's thinking about the next shot because Kerber has just placed so much pressure and accumulated so much pressure by being that brick wall stepping up in the court up on the baseline Still just a slender lead for Team Germany. 2-1. Team Germany leads two games, 2-1. Two Nicole Pratt saying yeah. she's getting tired. <laughs> Whatever those it mics takes, are always, Exactly, those <laughs> mics are going to pick up you, Freddy. I think Team Australia are hoping she's getting tired. I don't know about, I don't know about Angie, I think Freddy's looking tired. <laughs> <laughs> Big night. She's been busy. She's been on the iPad uh, for the last however many days. Day, day nine today. Once again, we weave our way through the uh, many thousand of fans that have made their way out to the Ken Rosewall. game rather than the beer giving them a little bit of optimism that Anna can still turn this around. Kerber could have been coasting at three love. She was denied that Ladies opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, find your seats quickly please. Thank you. Time. Look, if you're Team Australia here, you're just saying hang in there because what a win this will be for Angie Kerber. 18 months out of the game, she's lost it. All of our matches this week, this will be huge for her to get over the line. And, and inevitably, there's going to be a, a situation where there might be some nerves in play. getting tired but I'm not sure that I've seen that in this match just yet I mean we watched it earlier in the week and I definitely saw some fatigue and laps in terms of intensity throughout the probably her first couple of matches Line. That is like a tiny, tiny amount. Oh. 
And that's why Kerber has primarily started to direct traffic to that forehand wing of Tom Lanovich because that's what she can do off that backhand side. Even the Aussie fans had to appreciate the effort that went into that particular rally. Desperate defence from Tom Nianovic. But another shot of pure dynamite from Kerber off that forehand wing, her 20th forehand winner. Kerber keeps Tomjanovic at bay. Well, it's obviously the Kerber forehand that's doing so much damage, but for me, the backhand cross court has been excellent for the last hour, or well, since 5-1 in the first set, actually, because she's keeping it low. It's getting Tomjanovic up off the baseline because it's bouncing around that mid-court, and then if she doesn't get it fully on the line, Kerber's right on the next forehand.
still very much all to play for in this final set in Sydney. Team Germany leads three games to two. And a really good look at the termination on Tomjanovic's face after that last game. I haven't seen them yet. Did they not know the next that 35 is the new 45? That's right. Yeah. Also, That's like Manorino 25, as well. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. The light's diminishing here in Sydney. They'll be hoping that it's uh, not diminishing at the same rate as Tomanovic's chances in this final set, but it is golden hour. And the green and gold battling hard in this final set, having started so brightly. Has been uh, Angie Kerber that has been rolling back the years, Dime. reminding us why she has such a rich resume of trophies. Eight-time major winner Ken Rosewall. This stadium is uh, named after. We've got a three-time major winner underneath it at the moment. In the lead, it's a slender one. Can Tomlanovic balance the books? around that shot has been something else. That's a beautiful back end there from Tomlanovic, but even off the serve, she's still surfing at such a high percentage of first serves. 73%, but 84% for the entire match. But gosh, she's winning now 73% of points behind that first serve. The first set, it was almost around 40%, wasn't it? third got to find a way to make it feel whatever it takes sometimes in a moment where it's a massive point a little bit and once again Kerber doubles her lead in this final set 4-2 and that's usually Isla's favorite shot the backhand line which she can 
add some pace on, but Angie's already moving out that way. She's just soaking it up and going back cross court, keeping it real low, just reading the play so well. I really like that come on there. I love it when Isla gets vocal and you can hear some really positive reinforcement. Spoke about her self-belief and she has got such a great game. She's never going to be screaming out loud, or is she? It's just not her personality, but there's definitely been a lift in the little fist pumps and the come ons mm. towards the bench over the last two games. And she looked as though she chose not to invest too much in that last point. Good hold once again to love for Team Australia. They stay very much part of the conversation in this final set. Four games to three. Casey, would you want to be talked to at this moment? No. <laughs> I, I actually would love to be in my own head, in the zone. Unless it was something clear, concise, but not someone in my ear. I, I much prefer to problem solve as well, and sometimes I was actually, I remember the vote when it was going around on court coaching back in the day, and I was probably, I was one of the ones that voted no, but when it came in, I, I certainly used it, but it's very clear in what I needed from it. There's a man that's very much got his eyes on the TV set, Alex Dimonor, coming off the back of that wonderful win against the world number one, Novak Djokovic, in straight sets, taking on a man that he's uh, had troubles with in the past, has uh, lost six out of the seven previous meetings to Zverev tonight. He would dearly love to have a little bit of the pressure off as he tries to score a second win over the German if his fellow teammate can turn this one around. Loves team competitions and loves playing in Australia. the first time in a while that we've seen Kerber go multiple times with her forehand cross court to Isla's backhand, which is the play that she was working with in the first set, which I think leans absolutely into Isla's favor. Beautiful 
shot there from Isla, and that's why we love tennis, right? It's a game of chess, Kirby. and you're so right. Herbert has not gone into Isla's strengths for a, a while now, hence we feel like she's probably got into this match. But this is so good now from Tom Lanovic. Surely a few nerves is creeping in for Kerber as well right now. Tomanovic virtually unplayable in those opening three points of this game. I don't know if Kerber's done an awful lot of uh, things wrong to find herself triple break back point down but uh, she has done nicely to recover the first two more though thank you oh. that is an earned double fault by the quality that we saw from the Australian down there now, Laura. Oh. Yeah, there just a little. <laughs> I've just had to turn you off a bit. <laughs> I also feel the presence of a flag right above my head. Tennis showcase at its absolute best. Team competitions, mixed competitions, right at the death. Players playing at their absolute best. That is how you back yourself in these big moments. There's no doubt she's made some unforced errors off that forehand side, but this one, just commitment to shot. Keeps the head Thank nice you. and still, nice shape over Thank the you. net. The last changeover being so brave with her tennis. A 
magnificent couple of games given the circumstances. What a turnaround. Tomjanovic, 5-4. Everything coming together at the right time, Casey. Yeah, and she's just backed herself. She's absolutely backed her ability and in big moments, stepped up, taken a few risks. That's what tennis is about. And it has been just wonderful to see because certainly the tennis is there. We've seen that from both players throughout this entire match, but it's who in these big moments can pull it together. And all of those last couple of games was just phenomenal. type of reaction will that provoke from Angie Kerber. So important, isn't it, to not lose your identity under pressure. And credit to Tom Anovic, she has played her style of play to recover from a, a breakdown in this final set. perhaps with the benefit of hindsight thank has flipped in favour of Team Australia. Thank you. Magical tennis. She didn't want to go near the backhand of Tom Lanovic, did she? She went one, two, three, four. Into that forehand corner of Tom Lanovic until she got the one she could put away for a winner. Great return, and another one. but you'll never break her resolve. That was Bye. clutch. Okay. Barely a shot that Tomjanovic even, even had a look at her backhand in that whole game. And my palms are sweaty down here. You can feel the tension from the crowd. Well, I think we both, we all know what it means to both players in various ways. For Kerber, Thank it's you. that first Thank win you. on the board. 
for Isla, who's had so much time out with that knee and representing your nation. What a crowd here. It's a big moment for both players in, in different ways. What an incredible point. So much court coverage from both players. We know this is a trademark shot, but just missing it. took the high backhand rather than taking it out the air. She could have maybe got forward a little earlier, but just ridiculous defender from Tomjanovic. through the middle part of the court but to the backhand of Kerber where she cannot do as much damage off that side. into it. Both of them looking pretty tired. Two hours, 15 into this. from Angie. 13, 14. And she went off the menu there from what she's been doing. Something a little unexpected. Absolutely everything that we love about the sport. We'll see Kerber 
So for her first win okay, since German Wimbledon Olympics. 2022. Well, the agony etched on that fan's face, and he may well be right, but there has been enough fluctuations throughout the course of this match to suggest there could be another twist before somebody gets across the finishing line. But that was a stubborn performance of a returning game from Kerber, Casey. Stubborn is a fantastic word there, Petch, because it's exactly what it was. She just refused to not go to that Team Germany zone until she had won that game, and, and that's just a whole nother level, and another level of Angie Kerber. But to be expected, she's had three matches, and we always knew that the level was going to come, but tonight has been super impressive. Let that atmosphere soak through your TV screens, through the speakers. It has been a phenomenal Dying. night here already in Sydney. Can she add to that extensive catalogue of winners we've seen from Tom Anovich to find a way back into this match and push us into a final set breaker? Or can Kerber? notch up that elusive win. And the great champions never dilute their success today with self-destructiveness, and that is what we've seen from Kerber, discipline. But when she saw the alley was open to take the shot, she didn't blink. Total conviction. Yes, of course, this is about the tennis pitch, but it just feels like so much more in this moment right now. What a curtain raiser for the Australian Open summer of tennis. Treats herself. in sport are vanishingly small and it looked as though Tomjanovic's chances had vanished. Not so. Break back point. Oh. Thank you. Thank you.
Can you believe it? Yes. I, can't, I can't believe she's just made that and the slice on the run that got herself back in the point. Look how good this is. I'm actually speechless because that was incredible. Extraordinary. Was it fatigue? Six games old. Or was it just simply Tyrant. the pressure of the moment on Kerber? Well, she's just been right in front of me here and she took a long old look at Torben Belts and a deep couple of breaths after that. Two drop shots. Oh. You'll be thinking about that for a while. for their nation right now. Serve there from Angie, she needed that point. Two one, team Australia. All set up by the out wide serve that she hasn't used a heap of throughout this match. Good to see Isla also just going back to the towel and taking an extra few seconds. this forehand until she waited for Isla to pick a side and then the gap just wide open line for the backhand.
get away from her, that forehand. I don't mind it when Isla goes through that middle part of the court, get some depth, I just feel that forehand side, she just can't create as much. And we've seen a few errors like that one. Ball. on every single shot that Kerber hit in that rally from the second serve, which was above average in terms of pace. How good's tennis? So good. Look at these shots. A moment that looks like a painting. Expect the unexpected. Sheer brilliance from Kerber. of winning for Tomjanovic makes it also dangerous and she is always fluctuating on that edge right shot just couldn't execute it nice composure there from Tomjanovic a nice one two punch 53 kilometers on the serve, but opened up the court just slightly for a winner. Got to get up and put some pressure on this Kerber serve now. Just like that. Some good depth. the dagger. Six, five, team Australia. Double-handed dynamite from Tom Janovic.
more to come. How much more can you take? Not much more up here in the commentary box. <laughs> Probably not much more for the people in the crowd as well, or for these two women. My goodness, have they just left everything out here on the court. Kerber blindsided by Tomjanovic's brilliance to go to match point, bounces back. Australian, every fan, second match point. Seven all. Point team Germany. What a way for you to announce your first win since more than 18 months. Angie Kerber has not picked up a win on the tour for various reasons since Wimbledon 2022 but she puts Germany ahead tonight in one of the most magnificent matches you will see all season. Heartbreak for Tomjanovic, but a little bit of history for Kerber. That was just an incredible match from both women. That must be just the most amazing feeling for a player like Angie Kerber, knowing the time she's had out of the game, knowing how disciplined she is, her fight, she's lost three matches, and this is her first win back on the board. Wow, what jubilation for Angie Kerber. Extremely happy for her. Obvious disappointment for Isla Tomlanovic, because, wow, did she just give herself every opportunity out there tonight. Just unfortunately, right there, those last three points just didn't find the court. And there it is, the moment of triumph. She's back. One of the best evenings tennis you will ever witness. And there's more to come from Sydney. It had everything. And here is Angie with Laura Robson. Angie, I can't imagine the adrenaline going through you right now, but if you could put into words what the last couple of hours was like. The match was so good. It had a bit of everything. You were down, you were up. Put it into words for us. You know, first of all, I mean, Isla played an amazing uh, match. I think we both play on a really high level, and uh, it's so great to see her back as well after the injury last year. So for me, it's the first singles win after coming back, and it's really a great feeling. And, uh, you know, the support of you guys are incredible, so I really enjoy to play here. And you're such a competitor. Yeah, you can give that round of applause, absolutely. <laughs> but you're such a competitor. You lost your other three matches this week to come out here today and respond like that. What did you tell yourself last night? What changed for you? 
You know, I just try to play as many matches as possible before going to Melbourne. And, you know, I try to learn as well from the last three matches and coming out here and winning now such a tough battle. Uh, it means a lot to me and it's, it's great to have a match like this before going to the Australian Open. And you mentioned you were out of the game for 18 months. This is your first week back. How much of that 18 months were you thinking about stadiums like this, atmosphere like this and matches like this? You know, I really miss this atmosphere. I mean, I really miss the emotions and to have a great team in the background, that means a lot to playing for your country. I mean, this is something I'm really uh, proud of. And uh, yeah, starting the year like this, it's, it's a great feeling. And it's going to be even more nervous now because you're going to have to watch from the side for the next match, Dimonor versus Verev. What are your thoughts on that? Are you even going to be able to watch? It's so hard from the side. You know, I think it will be another tough battle now. And uh, I'm ready and I'm excited to the next match. Good luck for the next one. Angie Kerber. Well, after what happened against Zachary, uh, the dismissal that she had and then being 5-1 down in that opening set, a win looked as though Angie Kerber was chasing a unicorn. But champions are just built different and that is what she showed us tonight she showed a little bit of what she needed towards the back end of that opening set couldn't get to parity but she was absolutely pitch perfect at the start of the second set and then the third set evolved into something that we will all remember for a very long time it's not always that tennis matches converge at the same time to give you what we were given at the back end of that third set because of course Kerber nearly ran away with it she had a break point to go up three love in that final set that just clipped the tape on the way through and perhaps she would have been marching to victory in a comfortable style but as it was she gets through there in two hours and 34 minutes in a final set breaker and it was breathtaking it was brutal in terms of the physicality it was a stunning turnaround for the German on her forehand. Just the three winners against Zachary, 26 tonight. I know it was three sets, but it was still the potency that she produced off that wing that we will remember. And it certainly bodes well for her in terms of uh, what's upcoming. And it may well be, of course, a final for Team Germany because Poland are through and Team Germany tonight have gone 1-0 up. Sasha Zverev, who perhaps thought he was going to go in there and have to salvage the situation, will also be jubilant. He has the opportunity to clinch it against a player that he has beaten six out of the previous seven times. That's just one match of three to come here tonight in Sydney. And unfortunately for the green and gold, it goes to the Germans.